Welcome to the Driveway Beers Podcast with Mike and Alex. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you enjoy the show. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share on any platform that you're listening on. All right, welcome back to another show. Thank you for tuning in. As always, uh, we want to thank Cheers and Spirits and the Arnold Station Plaza in Arnold, Maryland for sponsoring this episode. Um, if you do have any wine or alcohol or beer needs, please head on over to Cheers and Spirits. Let them know we sent you. Um, the staff over there is extremely helpful, especially for a kind of a, a novice alcohol drinker like myself. If, uh, if I'm ever looking for recommendations on, on something new, or if I go in there and, and I ask them if I'm looking for a bottle of wine for my wife, I can, I know I can go in there. They're going to give me a good recommendation. And she's going to be drinking something that she likes, even though I know nothing about wine whatsoever. So we want to thank cheers and spirits, uh, cheers and spirits at the Arnold station Plaza head on over there. Uh, get the service you deserve at the price you want and we got a kind of an interesting pop culture topic to talk about today uh, Mike brought it up to me Mike's Mike's uh, Mike's throat's feeling better we don't yeah. have we don't have him on the the remote line tonight right no more strep <laughs> so um, and strep sucks for adults supposedly it's worse for us than it is for kids um, I used to get it a lot oh I well, my, my middle son actually had his tonsils removed because he was a carrier, I guess, of it. That's what we thought so, I was because I was wow. getting it four or five times a year. Wow, I'm surprised they didn't take them. So well, they eventually they did the scope up my nose, down my throat kind of mm-hmm. deal. So they take the freezy spray, okay, spray your nose, and then they take this scope and go right up there, mm-hmm. and they can look down your throat. And, oh. And so they found out I had uh, quite a bit of damage in my throat. So they diagnosed it as GERD, put me on the uh, Pantopers, all the Protonics. Okay. And um, after I started that, probably about six months after that, I very rarely get strep now. Hmm. Wow. They basically said, you don't have the open source for the germs to get in. Yeah. More or less. Now, I don't know if there's any actual fact to it, but I don't give a crap because it worked. Right. So. Well, the, the last time I had it was right after my youngest was born. And I was sick. I couldn't hold him or help or anything. I just sat on the recliner in the basement and watched football. So I don't know if it's a bad thing. It sounds awful. <laughs> so, and I got this, it was weird. I, we had just left a, a baseball tournament. Um, my son's team violated my baseball tournament rule, which is <laughs> uh, win in black. <laughs> once you get, once you're done with pool play, you get to bracket play. If you're going to lose, do it early. And uh, they were Sunday morning champions and then proceeded to get their, uh, the, this there's the snot kicked out of them in their championship game, which of course was two hours after the first game ended. Right. So, um, yeah. Then I started feeling the tickle in my throat. Then when it started to hurt to swallow, the next day I was like, "Yep." Oh. Went in and I was, I was hoping it was strep because I knew that antibiotics would just knock it out. Mm-hmm. And took antibiotics and was fine the next day. So, um, but yeah, there's been some. I mean, I don't want to say it's interesting because it happens all the time. Uh, this time, it's Jason Aldean who's the target, um, and he apparently has gone awry of the people who are uh, who go who get, uh, get upset about these things because of his uh, song "Try That in a Small Town," and I guess um, the video and the lyrics show people rioting and all that sort of stuff and. and he says, in a small town, we take care of our own. And I mean, I really don't see the big deal of it. But if you're looking to get offended, you can be offended by just about anything. So I guess country music television pulled the video from there, which I was like, oh, they pulled the video. I'm like, do they, anyone still watch videos on cable TV? No, <laughs> like I, I, the I three think, guys that aren't going to see that video now? So, yeah, because a lot of people are watching CMT for the music videos. <laughs> you, know what, you know what they're watching it for? If anyone's watching CMT, they're watching it for like basically the country version of Hallmark movies. Right. That's what CMT plays. Yeah. So I don't even know what they play because I never watch it. Yeah. I'm probably not their target demo. No. So it's mostly women who want to see the romance story where the the girl uh, she fell in love when she was a teenager. Uh, that didn't work out. She, she moved was, to the big city and then right. came back. Or she got she got married. She got divorced, and that's why she moved back to the small town. Right. And then she found. 
you know, she found the high school sweetheart, and they got back together, and they lived happily ever. Wait, the guy looks like Luke Bryan. Yeah. Okay. Time. Yeah. So yeah, so they pulled it, and then a bunch of other celebrities and people were all fired up about this thing. And um, there's another song called "Small Town Throwdown." It was by I think Brantley Gilbert. Um, there have been a couple. I mean, people just get so so amped up about these these things and and but part of me thinks it's not really just everyone it's just a couple loud vocal people and because it generates clicks and you know here we are two schlubs talking about it um what's like we don't get clicks yeah i mean look we're so we're people with yeah you know, our youtube channel has over 800 subscribers our videos get like five views right yeah. because we don't have clickbait uh thumbnails Right. We don't have clickbait titles. Mm -hmm. Now, one of our most viewed, I'll say that the two most viewed or listened to episodes was the one where we put um, the word erotic in the t in the name of the, the episode and the Kyle Rittenhouse episode. Yeah. Because Kyle Rittenhouse's name was clickable it was yeah. during his trial. Yep. And That's what got clicks. Yeah. Well, there's was there the adult hobbies one? That's the one. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, so the erotica one, so... It was Adult Hobbies is still our number one episode to this day. Mm. Erotica, I think, is number two, which <laughs> had no erotica in it whatsoever. <laughs> and then the Kyle Rittenhouse is number three. Yeah. To this day. I mean, but that's what gets clicks. And I guarantee this one is going to get clicks because I'm going to put Jason Aldean's name in on the thumbnail and the title of, of the episode. Yeah. That's why it's going to get clicks. And people are going to listen to see if we're for the takedown mm -hmm. or against it. Right. And then when we hit them with some nuance, they're, they're going like, to oh. right off. Right. <laughs> Their heads are going to explode. Like, I don't want to hear this. I can't. I, I, these guys don't agree with me, so I want to hate them, but they made some points that I might, but I, I still want to hate them, so I hate them. <laughs> right. It, it's funny because we, we don't appeal to left wing and we don't appeal to right wing. No. Because some of the points were right we're on the right with some of the points we're on the left with. Yeah. I mean, it's funny because you mentioned this a lot. You listen to Jimmy door. I listen to Jimmy door. Yeah. I don't think we're as liberal in our viewpoints as him, but we definitely lean more toward the Jimmy door and maybe even the bill Maher side. Cause I think bill Maher is finally coming around to the fact yeah. that all of these liberal ideas are, kind of like um what's the word of the dream their um dreamscapes their their like pie in the sky type of stuff yeah it's like what if if we had a government that worked for the people these the, these things could get done like universal health care right and most of the money wouldn't go to some ceo right right but as realists, we kind of realize that it's not going to happen because of that right we don't have a go we have a government that works for corporate oligarchs and right. um, defense contractors and big donors. So, yeah, there would be money for all these things, but there's no money. But we have plenty of money to drop bombs in Ukraine, but we're not like... Right. So... We just sent cluster bombs over there. Yeah. Like, these things are considered, like... like uh, I think they consider them, like, like... They're for war criminals, basically. Yeah. That use these things. For anyone that doesn't know what a cluster bomb is, it's basically a bomb that above the target explodes and basically thousands of BBs the little bomb -like. shoot out yeah and it doesn't call, it doesn't blow up a target it essentially destroys it and people 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 will essentially get hot BBs run right through them yeah whatever's there and then the other nice thing about them is the ones that don't go off look like little balls mm -hmm. that a kid would might want to play with yeah so when they go find them yeah. you know because kids will, I mean, look at look at any video of some you know uh, impoverished nation. You see kids like playing on trash piles, like finding pieces of metal and stuff. Like same thing in a war zone. Like eventually, some little Ukrainian kid or Russian kid is going to be walking around and say, "Oh, look a ball," and like blow his hand off. Well, it's kind of like um, in the Middle East, like in uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan, um, with our wars and Russia's wars. Mostly, it had. They highlighted it during Russia after Russia left Afghanistan, 
Russia essentially left landmines. Mm -hmm. And I guess even 20 years later, kids were still finding them, touching them. Oh, yeah. And blowing arms and legs off. Yep. And it's still happening in, um, I want to say, in the Balkans, like Bosnia or Herzegovina, all yeah. that is, it's all, like, people will walk, like, little kids will, or even, like, even farm animals will step on them and blow up. And be like, oh, well, who cares? It's a cow. Well, if that's your one cow, mm -hmm. and that's where you get milk, and you sell that milk in the market, and then you keep some for your family, like, you know, what if your car just blew up one day? Right, and you're an Uber driver. Yeah. Or a taxi driver. Yeah. Your your life, your, uh, your your livelihood's gone. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Go, I mean, going back to the Jason Aldean thing, for people that don't know, essentially it was saying, uh, he was basically trying to say, try the try the BLM riots in a small town, see what happens. Mm -hmm. That was essentially what he was saying, and a lot of the video footage was of the BLM riots and yeah, or, that, or protests, depending on how you want to see it. But essentially it was try that in a small town. Yeah. And he was basically saying um, you wouldn't get away with it because the people in the small town would basically shoot back and whatever. Right. It, it, it was like super duper like, hill, not hillbilly stuff, but like it, I feel like a lot of people, like they're going to say, oh, well, I'll, I'll, I'd fight back. And then it happens and they don't fight back. Oh, there's plenty of dudes out there that have all kinds of AR-15s and then Molon Labe stuff on their truck that wouldn't aren't going to do shit. Right. So, and that's like some of these guys, like, you're not going to do shit. Right. Yeah. So, so, so Jason Aldean makes a song because, to be honest, that, that type of talk is going to be popular amongst the country music scene. And so, when he made the video, he knew what he was doing. He knew it would piss off a certain amount of people. But the thing is, though, those aren't the people that are buying his music. Right. Those aren't the people that are going to his concerts. That video will get him more more tickets sold at his concert. It'll get him more record sales. Getting it off of CMT isn't going to affect his bottom line one bit. No, in fact, I think on Apple Music, Spotify, everything, his song's now number one downloaded mm -hmm. since this all happened. And... You know, th there's another bit of controversy because, like, the courthouse that was in the video, supposedly they tried someone there, uh, or, like, someone got lynched there or something, and it's like, whoever knew that did a whole bunch of, bunch of research to find that. Right. And, I mean, you could probably pick, like, say it was in some courthouse in, you know, Chitlin Switches, Alabama. I'm sure some miscarriages of justice occurred in that courthouse. Yeah, no, I mean, you could have done how many small courtrooms in the South had lynchings? Yeah. Probably a lot of them. Mm -hmm. So for someone to say, well, that courthouse had lynchings. Well, they all did. Yeah. He it, you, Basically, he'd have to go to a courthouse in like Massachusetts Portland, or Portland, Oregon or something <laughs> yeah. like that. You can't go to, what do you mean, Massachusetts? No. The Salem Wood Trials so, can't do that either. Can't do that. Yeah. Hawaii. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> no. Japan. Remember the Japanese? Yeah. They, they they had a then they take over Hawaii for like long before as part of the United States long before Pearl Harbor, I think they had a massive influence on Hawaii. There was a big population of Japanese in Hawaii. Yeah. So um, yeah, I don't remember if it was Japanese or Chinese, but I mean, and it, it, there was a big uproar over they were trying like someone was trying to make the Japanese as sympathetic figures during World War Two. And then someone was like, uh, I think you need to check your history on what they did before World War II. Yeah. When they basically, I mean, that whole Asian area of of the world, they do not get along. No, and the Japanese really did some, I don't want to say the Jap I'm saying the Japanese Empire. Yeah, yeah. So the Imperial Japanese Army, Imperial Japanese Navy did some awful things to, uh, all over, pretty much from Korea down to Vietnam. Yeah, and they, you know, the rape of Nan of of uh, Nanjing. That was, I mean, it was awful. It, it and the thing is, they had been fighting there since like 1934. Mm -hmm. So people kind of think like, oh, the World War II started in 1939. Now, like, the Japanese have been pretty much decimating the Chinese for you know years prior to european uh fight you know uh hostilities starting so they messed they really did a lot a lot of damage there so and people, well we dropped the bomb on them that wasn't right okay well <laughs> i mean yeah. uh to to try to turn the jap the imperial japanese forces into 
like sympathetic figures. It's tough. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it, but I mean, the point they made about us dropping the bomb on Nagasaki and Hiroshima, essentially with the war already won. Part of that was true. Mm-hmm. I mean, and, and whatever the motives were for dropping those bombs, sure, that that's up for debate. But you're not going to make them a sympathetic figure, yeah. After they did all that they did, right? You know, it, it, but then, then again, I mean, it's not like the U.S. is a sympathetic figure either. I mean, right. for things that we've done. Um, but well, anyway, it, but you're right. The the people that are talking about this, about the Jason Aldean thing, it's the same people just trying to stoke any kind of just clickbait they can yeah and and they know people listen to it right and then on the fox news side you know they have everyone getting all fired up about they cancel culture this and cancel culture that and on the on on the msnbc side it's i can't believe this guy wrote racist songs and this is racist and everything is racist and you know he you know tr- try that in a small town and they're all supremacists and bigots and you know and but the funny thing is for all this that's going on now and the right calling the left snowflakes and all this nonsense, the snowflake dials turned up really high on the right because they're all fired up with the women's national, uh, U.S. women's national soccer team. Right. Who in, I, I'm not sure where they're even playing, New Zealand, I think. Um, yeah, I think it is New Zealand. I think so, yeah. Apparently, so they're all standing for the national anthem. Some of the women have their hands across their hearts. Some have them behind their backs. Um, but they're all standing, right? That's a key but distinction. They're not singing, right? And the, yeah, right. They're not singing. The hands not over the heart. Meanwhile, it, before the Kaepernick thing, if they went up and down the NFL sideline, not all those players had their hands over their hearts. Some of them had their helmet, like they had their hands on their helmets behind their backs. But they were still like they were being respectful just by standing, yeah. right? Well, that's what these women are doing. Yeah, and a lot of a lot of NHL goalies do, don't take their masks off. Right, it's all superstition. Once they put their gear on, it stays on. They don't take it off. Yeah, so they stand there. Well, well you know, uh, that Simeon Varlamov didn't have his helmet off. That means he does. He hates America. Uh, he just didn't take his helmet off. Or you'll see him like they'll start to skate before the song's over because these guys are all amped up. Mm-hmm. No one says anything about that. That's fine. Yeah, um, you know. You played sports in high school and in college. I did too. Like, you know, especially at the varsity level in high school and in college, they probably played the national anthem before games. I do not remember a single time where me or one of my teammates ever sang the lyrics to the song. No. The only thing I might do was yell, oh, (laughs) for the Orioles. (laughs) That's about it. Uh, So it's... You know, the, it's so funny how neither side is interested in. They're just they're just trying to find issues to cudgel the other side with, mm-hmm. and these ladies are standing there before a game. Some are focused on the game. Some are are are, uh, you know, they're 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 just zoned in. They're in the zone. They're not thinking about the song. Some of them might not even hear the song playing. So most stadium sound systems suck. Yeah. So you end up hearing like. The feed, like not the feedback, but it's almost like an echo, mm-hmm. so you can't really hear it. So now, if you're mouthing the words and you're not mouthing, and you're you're listening to one part of it and it's on another part that's on the TV, now it sounds like you're not singing it right. Yeah, that's even something else for someone yeah. to pick at you about. And then you know, if you're in the military, when the national anthem, and you're wearing your uniform for the national anthem, you're supposed to face the flag or the sound of the music and stand at attention and render a hand salute. And you're not supposed to sing the song. You're supposed to stand there. So, do they hate America too? Yep. <laughs> because they're not they singing. Yeah. Absolutely. But it, it, it's creepy. It's almost like this dear leader stuff. Where like, you know, where the communist dictator puts everyone in the square and they have to cheer when he walks down. And if you don't cheer loud enough, you get beaten. Yeah. Like you didn't sing loud enough. You didn't have a smile on your face when you were singing. You know. So it's like sing the song. Oh, but smile when you're singing. But sing louder. So it's, it, they keep moving the goalposts. Yeah. But then the part of it is like, well, I'm not going to root for the women's national team because Megan Rapinoe's on it. She hates America. Well, guess what? She's standing for the national anthem, too. Yeah. And I, I do think people that have a gripe with America, they don't they don't phrase it correctly. Right. It's kind of like, if you're going to say, this is my problem with America, preface it with saying, 
this is the best country in the world. Mm -hmm. I'm happy and proud to be here. But we can do better, and this is why I think that. Yeah. But they don't do that. They just say, F you, America, because y'all suck. Yeah, this place is trash. This place is tr this place is the worst. Okay, Megan Rapino, who, as a as a lesbian woman in this country, and, and they're going to say, I know what you're going to say. She's got more rights here than she does anywhere else in the world. More or less, sure. I mean, I'm sure there's some other countries that, that gay and lesbians have more rights in. But in this country, nothing is hindering her now, especially now. Right. From living the life that she wants. And in I, fact, m most gay and lesbian people are probably, they're not outspoken. They're not, and not that I'm saying they don't, they shouldn't say anything. I'm just saying, if you just go about and live your life, nobody is going to care. You're going to have neighbors that are straight. You're going to have neighbors that are, uh, of all shapes and sizes that may know that you're gay or you're lesbian and you're, you, you're married to your, your, um, same sex partner. And they're not going to care. They're not going to give shit. Yeah, they're not going to celebrate you, like, like Pride Month every time. But at the at the end of the day, if all you wanted was to be treated equal, but being treated equal means nobody really, no one's celebrating you. Right. You just got. You're just living your life. I like think. Your neighbors. I think it got. It was on guys like. So this is what equal is? Well, this isn't fun. Right. Like, yeah, welcome to equal. Right, welcome to equal. <laughs> it's You go to barbecues with your neighbors and you're not talking about Pride Week. Right. You know, or or you're, you're at a barbecue with your neighbors and you're not talking about you know, whatever, whatever LGBT uh, thing you want to talk about that week. You're talking about your kids and sports and, you know, or your work or your house payment or the repairs you're doing to your house or or the crazy lady five doors down that got a package for the neighbor and then posted on Facebook with with the package. Yeah. And like everyone else is like, well why didn't you just go and drop it off next door? Why did she post it on <laughs> Facebook? That actually happened today by the way. Yeah, I saw that one. Yeah. I'm like this lady she lives at twelve fifty and I'm not gonna say the lane, but she lives at she lives at twelve fifty. The package was for twelve fifty one. Cross street. Probably. Yeah. And she literally posted on Facebook, said, oh, this got delivered to the wrong place. It's on my porch. Okay. Walk it over there. <laughs> it's 10 feet. Right. <laughs> but, you know, it, but it, it's almost like equal is just living in basically uh, it's obscurity. Yeah. No one cares about you. Right. And that's a good thing. I'm, I'm happy that, I mean, my friends care about me. Yeah, but I, I, I'm not like marching through the streets for my Armenian heritage. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. There's, there's no Arm. There's no Armenian pride. Uh, happy day. There might be. <laughs> huh? There might be. Maybe, but I'm not going to that. <laughs> I don't want to deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> right. Right. You have a softball tournament to go to. That's right. I guess <laughs> I got to coach twelve girls. And go play in a softball tournament this weekend, <laughs> and I'm hoping not to get crushed. Right. That's all. That's what my. That's where my we're thoughts are. Not to get crushed, mm -hmm. but if we're gonna lose, right. lose early. Never lose early. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine, like, on Sunday, give me a pep talk? Yeah. All right, look, girls. Girls. <laughs> we played great yesterday. I get it. But if we're losing by like six in the first inning, we're gonna tank, <laughs> so we can go home early today. <laughs> I don't think that's the pep talk yeah. anyone's looking for. I, look, I don't want to spend all day here watching mediocre softball, <laughs> okay? And you guys probably don't want to stand here and play mediocre softball all day. That's right. So let's just meet each other in the middle. And if we're going to lose, let's do it. In the, let's get mercy ruled in the second inning right. and get out of here and get our day back. You want to know what? I'd probably bribe them. You're like, look, girls, after the first inning, we're down by six. I'll take you for ice cream if you punt in the second <laughs> inning. <laughs> just, just, just don't field anything. Let them, or just ice cream's on me. Yeah, <laughs> I might win that one. <laughs> like, no, you know, like, look, you can either have ice cream for free, mm -hmm. or a three dollar trophy that'll end up in the back of your closet. Right. What do you think? What do you right. think? We got a deal. Yeah, you're gonna break <laughs> it on the way home. In the right. <laughs> so won't even have your name on it. Right. You know what I'm saying? What about name? Right. And that trophy comes with a four-hour gap in the middle of the day. Right. During which time, 
we do nothing. <laughs> so right, it, and it'll be a hundred and five degrees, right? Because it's July, yeah, and you're all going to complain, right? Every one of you. <laughs> so, ice cream <laughs> or another six hours of this <laughs> if we lose the first one. Although, I, so for us, if we do lose the first one, we're out. But your point is, if you win the first one and then lose the second one, so if you're going to win the first one. Win the second one. W- win the rest of them. Right? Yeah. Don't yeah. win the first one and then get mercy ruled in the second one, not in the th- second inning. Let's wait till the sixth inning to do it. Right. Like, let's just stay right there until all the way to the sixth inning. Like, we could have we could have been out of here. Right. We're out of here six hours ago. <laughs> we eat throw you in the third inning <laughs> of this debacle that we're right. playing through right now. <laughs> Like, but, oh, you can't do that. They're only 10. You can't destroy their feelings. What are you teaching them? Efficiency. All right. I'm <laughs> teaching them that ice cream's awesome. Yeah, sometimes you got to cut your losses. <laughs> right? <laughs> Don't stay married to a bad idea. <laughs> what? You know, the funny part is I have no idea how we're going to do. But speaking of how we're doing, we got a, re- a new review on from uh, on our Apple podcast. Oh, yeah? Do you, you want to hear it? Sure. It's It's a one-star review. Ooh. And the title says zero stars. Well, you already gave us one, so hmm. Right. I don't think because I don't think he can give us zero. <laughs> so like, the one is like a mercy one. And he goes, and it's from uh, I'm, I'm even gonna say his name. It's Benny Nunez. So we're reaching some minorities. Okay. That's a pot. Yeah. Uh, this podcast is a serious waste of time. Oh. Feel your brain fold smoothing while you listen. Oh, wow. Thanks, guy. Better yet, get your teeth pulled or your plumbing unclogged. More entertaining. So that was from Benny Nunez from the United States on July 14th. Really appreciating the show. Because you want to know what, Benny? You listened. (laughs) You want to know what? Howard Stern got more airtime from NBC because people hated listening to him. So And the number one reason why? They wanted to hear what he had to say next. Yeah. The same reason the people that liked him listened. Only the people that didn't like them or didn't like him listened an hour longer than the people that liked him. So guess what, Benny? I appreciate you listening to the show. And thank you for leaving a review. Now, apparently, and I didn't realize this, we were in the top 100 podcasts in the Philippines. Really? For a time. We're out of it now. We're not in We're not in the top 100 anymore, but we were. Oh, wow. Uh we were under the category of personal journals. Okay. So, that's good and bad. Hmm. Yeah, I'm sorry Benny thinks we suck, but I also thank Benny for listening. Yeah. So, it's a little bit of both. I mean, my, my wife thinks this sucks too, but she doesn't even listen, so you're, you, he's you know, doing I, more. That's two people right there that think we <laughs> suck. <laughs> you know, I mean, hey. I'm, I'm, but at the same time, People think we suck. Listen, <laughs> thanks for listening. Yeah. What was that for when uh, from that show Frasier? Uh, I'm listening. Right. <laughs> well, so thank them for that. Oh, the other thing was uh, so with the women's national team. Beside all the protests, pol- political stuff, which they're not doing or whatever, I decided to place a little bet on the World Cup. Okay. Um, so you can bet on them to outright win the whole World Cup. It was going off at plus two forty, so basically I made a ten dollar wager. Mm-hmm. It'll return thirty four dollars, so okay. it'd be a twenty four dollar profit. Um, so it, it's a double double plus a half of your money um, if it hits. Now the chances of the women winning the World Cup are pretty good. Okay. So I was like, you know what? It's worth a ten dollar flyer on. Yeah. Um, we don't want to talk about football right now, do we? Not really. I, I, mean, made, I made some future bets on that too. Oh, okay, but yeah, I, I don't. I, and the it's, Orioles. It's funny. I never wanted <laughs> any of those. Like when when they when they did all their kneeling stuff, the women's national team. Like, yep. I wanted to lose, but the thing I don't really care that much about the sport to begin with. So, yeah. like soccer in any iteration, I, I don't care. So um, I like it. Yeah, I don't. I, I kind of like. I need to. I want to be able to pick a team so I can be a fan. It's just a matter of do I do it? Do I pick a team in the Premier League where the best players are, or do I pick a team in the MLS? 
that is local, right? But that's beside the point. My thing with the women's national team, when they had the protest, it's like, so Kaepernick was protesting a thing. Mm -hmm. He was protesting his certain cause. When the women's on the uh, when the women on the women's national team were taking a knee, it almost was like they're protesting the country itself. And my thing is like, look, if you're going to protest the country, but you're willing to take the paycheck that comes with representing the country, yeah, that kind of negates your purpose right there. Like, I, it, if you wanted to if protest you, the country, you would have not taken that money, right? Or, or you just w you wouldn't have because Megan Rapinoe at that time was a big figure in women's soccer. So if she would she would have made a bigger splash if she would have said I'm protesting the national team because of the stance that the US takes on these items. Yeah. And I'm not willing to take a paycheck from the country that I'm protesting against. That would have made a much bigger impact in my mind than kneeling before a national anthem and still taking the paycheck. And I, for me if you're going to say you don't like what the country is doing or you don't like the country, to take the paycheck from the country to represent the country, to me, it makes no sense. Yeah. It's like, just don't represent the country. Right. If, if you're, but then like, well, you're telling her to leave if she doesn't like it. No, no, no. I'm saying if you dislike it so much that you feel the need to protest it, you definitely shouldn't want to represent it in any form or fashion. We had to, I mean, you had no problem. Yeah, you have no problem cashing the check. Right. So. But, it, I mean, I get it. It's your job. But, it, you know, there's the National Women's Soccer League she could have gotten money for. No, don't get me wrong. The national team pays the most. Yeah. I get that. But if you, if you were really, uh, if you were really serious in your convictions, um, and you were really protesting the country and what it stood for, you, you would have made a bigger stand than just kneeling during a national anthem while you're cashing pretty sizable paychecks. Right. And everything that came with it, which was the endorsements. It's mm -hmm. like, look, I don't want to give up my fame and fortune, which in my mind says you really don't care enough about what you're speaking out about. Like okay. You're not putting your money where your mouth is. Yeah. Just another virtue signal. It was. Uh, it was. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, people take that seriously. Though. Yeah. It's like you're, she, she's not a serious individual. Mm-hmm. Like if you if you gave it all up to prove your point, that's a serious protest. It's kind of like yeah, when, when well, see, Ka Kaepernick kind of did give it up. Like he gave it all up. He gave it up. I, look, I might not like what he was protesting for, but he shot himself in the foot with his protest, and, and he, he stayed gave with up the it. paycheck. Yeah. Now is he making more now than he was before? Of course he is. And some people might argue that Kaepernick did what he did to keep himself relevant. Knowing that he was he he didn't do it when he was a starter, right? When yeah. he was on the bench, he did it. But right. when he was a starter, he didn't do it. And I wonder if had had San Francisco's fortunes remained good, like after they went to the Super Bowl and lost to uh, Baltimore, the, uh, yeah, to, to our Baltimore Ravens. Um, you should say that one more time. Our Baltimore Ravens. There you go. Yeah. Okay. And um, let the people know. And and Joe Flacco, um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but. Had had he had say the next year they went to the Super Bowl and won, and then he stayed the starter in, and that team was kind of messed up for like from the core, uh, starting with their coach and GMs. I mean, it was just all all kinds of dysfunction in that organization. But had it stayed good and they stayed good, would he have done any of it? I would say no. Yeah, me, 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 I, I agree with you. Because he was going to be in line for another big paycheck. Yeah. Because um, his numbers were good enough to where he would have been probably the highest paid quarterback when his contract came up. Yeah, well, and the NFL loves, they just love to throw money after quarter. You just be a mediocre quarterback in the NFL and you quit. Look at Kirk Cousins. Yep. You know, how much money they're paying that guy? Like, uh,. Albert Hainsworth said the best way to make money in the NFL is to be a mediocre quarterback. Yeah. And they'll just throw money at you. They think if they spend elite money on their mediocre quarterback, they become an elite quarterback. The Ravens yeah. did the same thing with Flacco. Yep. Yeah. Well, um, they, they had to pay him, though. Yeah. Well, he was going to go. He, he would He would end up in Pittsburgh or Cleveland or. Somebody was going to pay that dude money. Yeah. And that they would have they paid him that contract. Because yeah. 
He, I mean, he was literally a Super Bowl MVP. Yeah, that his postseason run was ridiculous. Oh yeah, I mean, somebody was going to pay him that money, and the Ravens had just. I mean, remember before Flacco was Kyle Bowler, mm-hmm. and they were like, "Oh, we ain't going back to that." Yeah, and Flacco didn't really seem like he was. He lost skill then. He probably he still had some of that skill. I'd say two, two, three years into that contract. Yeah, but four and five, he just he was a shell of himself. Um, but it also stemmed from when after the Super Bowl, I think Anquan that was the year Anquan Bolden went to San Francisco. Mm-hmm. I think Anquan Bolden was a bigger impact than Joe Flacco than people realize. Yeah, because um, he had a receiver who would go get the ball, and he also had a tight end that he had. Um, who was the one after Heap? Mm. I can't remember that dude's name. But he was a really good tight end. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't Heap. God, who? Was it Heap? But anyway, it was, one of the, the, to say. it was one of the five Mormons that played yeah. tight end for the Ravens at one point. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, I think we had a steady run of Mormon tight yeah. ends. <laughs> um, not to knock Mormons. I just think they were all... I think, I think we had like two or three like really good tight ends. And they were all like from BYU at one point. Right. It's like, is this the formula? <laughs> like, you finally... Like, well, it's like, it was BYU, like, how Penn State was linebacker university? Right, right, right. BYU was, was tight, tight end, end university. university. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, they had to run for a while. Well, I mean, you had to get away from the University of Miami after Aaron Hernandez decided to go murder some people. Right, yeah. Because that was, that was tight end university. Kellen Winslow was a kind of a bust. Then Aaron Hernandez came after that, and he just murdered some people. Yeah. So you kind of you couldn't go back to the, and then right. the University of Miami kind of lost some luster by the tight end group. <laughs> They're like, I wonder what the winner. what the Patriots would have done had Hernandez not been insane and killed people, and they had Gronkowski. Do you keep both of them, or do you do you shop one of them? Yeah, people don't remember that Hernandez was the number one. It yeah. was not Gronkowski. Yeah. Um, I think Gronkowski probably. Gets let go, yeah, because he was basically a blocking tight end. Mm-hmm. Be- because Hernandez was not a blocking tight end, right? Um, so the, yeah, I if he hadn't gone to jail for murder, <laughs> dude, it's like, I find it rare. I'm like, you were in the NFL, yeah. Stop murdering people. <laughs> Don't kill someone. There's more. There's more money in your actual career than your murders. You know what I'm saying? Like at some point, you just got. Dennis Pitta. That okay. was the guy. Um, so it's Todd Heap and then Pitta. Right. And, that, and then then Andrews. Yep. Now. Yeah. So. Um, so. Yeah. It, <laughs> Aaron, Aaron Hernandez. Bro. <laughs> when you make it, get out of the other game that you're in. Right. Like, st- you got to stop. Like, I don't even think he was part of the drug game. I think you just murdered some people. <laughs> it's like, or you got man. into it just for like to get into it, right? It's like, bro, you, <laughs> you were you were making low uh, low millions in the NFL, and you were due for big millions. Oh yeah, like my man could have been making eight mil a year for a tight end. That's not bad money. Yeah, and now I'm just I, I'm gonna shoot some people, or I'm gonna pay for people to shoot some people for over some. Bullshit. Did, did he kill himself in prison? Yep. Yeah. At least I think he did. I mean, killed himself. I mean, it, it's like an Epstein kill himself. Right. You know what I'm saying? Or is it like but someone killed him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, so, but Kaepernick, I don't think, I don't think he would have done any of that stuff had he stayed. He may have felt that way, mm-hmm. but if he's getting endorsements and he's getting big NFL money and you know, uh, had stayed at that level, but the team fell apart around him. They're looking for whatever, so they go and they. I don't even remember who who was it. Who was the guy that started ahead of him? Some yeah. some nobody was like it Blaine Gabbert. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> guy. So now you're like, wow, I'm backing up Blaine Gabbert, right? What can I do? Like, that's oh. enough to that's enough to hang yourself in prison. Oh, yeah, that, pulling Aaron Hernandez on yourself. Yeah, <laughs> which he basically did with him. <laughs> he basically committed career suicide. Yeah, and then he was dating that like smoke show Egyptian 
yeah. DJ girlfriend of you know. Some people think the girl is what got him. Like they said before, he dated her. He didn't think that way. Yeah. And then he dated her, and then kind of like melted his mind a little bit to like be what she wanted him to be. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a story as old as time. I mean, yeah. a guy gets in with a girl, wants to wants to keep the girl. Yeah. And so we, you know, it's kind of like uh, the Adam Sandler skit when they're talking about uh, this guy's trying to convince his friend to go to this uh, to go to this ceremony or whatever. And at the very end, the guy's like, no, man, I really don't want to go. And he's like, there's a girl I want to meet there, all right? <laughs> and so they go, and they're basically, they, they start chanting, the night time is the right time. The night time is the right time. And he and the other guy meets a girl there. And so he's like, man, I'm so glad you convinced me to come to this thing. <laughs> yeah, guys will do amazing things for, for girls. Oh, so. yeah. Yeah, some dumb stuff. Colin so. Kaepernick just threw away an NFL career over it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. think about this. Him and Marcus Mariota are essentially the same quarterback. Uh huh. Skill wise, Marcus Mariota is still playing in the NFL right now. Yeah. Whether whether he was making starter money or backup money doesn't matter. You can. I think that the was the Albert Hainsworth quote about a mediocre quarterback or a backup quarterback. I forgot what it was. It was mediocre. So because he was talking about Kirk Cousins. Oh, was he really? Yeah. But someone else said the the best job in the NFL was it being a backup quarterback. Yeah. You essentially don't have to play, mm-hmm. and you get paid. I, I think the minimum for quarterbacks is like two, three mil a year. Well, and, and now teams want to keep a solid backup because, like, look at look at the Ravens when Lamar went down. You have to have a Lamar capable quarterback. Oh, remind me of that. Someone that can do half of what he can do. We found out that dude. Couldn't do a quarter of what Lamar right. could do, <laughs> especially jump. Yeah, my man had <laughs> I mean, his three inch vertical. Yeah, he has no hops. Stuffed. <laughs> and look, I, this is coming from a guy who also has no hops. Right, he has no hops. Right, he's a professional athlete. <laughs> like we couldn't have, like you couldn't have put. A, you, you know, we can't jump. Right, like put a running back at quarterback if he can jump. Mm-hmm. At least they're used to doing the. They practice the dive. Yeah, hey, and then to lose the ball in that fashion. I don't think his toe got off the ground. I think when he tried to jump, he got shorter. <laughs> he was like a negative jump, <laughs> right? <laughs> and then, and then, of course, it's like, dude, how do you drop the ball? <laughs> like, you got the. Don't you have the sticky glove? Right. You should. Have, yeah. Put another one on before you make that play. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, man. And then, it, 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 I. The fact that I still remember this play, like I, I'm replaying it in my mind right now. It's as clear as day. Yeah, that some 280 or 300 pound lineman is running it the other direction, and nobody can catch him. <laughs> <laughs> like, look, Broseph, you just drop the ball. You catch chase, him. Yeah, chase after him. Yeah. <laughs> you're fast. Like, so now you can't jump, and you're not fast. <laughs> what are we doing with you? Right. <laughs> <laughs> can't throw <laughs> right can't i mean look i get it you know a minority solidarity but there has to be a white guy on the roster who could run faster than that yeah. shoot mark andrews almost got him <laughs> <laughs> like like our number one white guy yeah like i'm surprised pat ricard was in there too <laughs> but not snoop You're right my man was 30 yards behind him <laughs> behind the defensive lineman who got the ball right I'm still a little bit stung by this. <laughs> part of, part of my excitement, yeah. but I, I that play just when they said they were bringing him back for another season, like that should have been instant cut. That was who who was the um, who was the wide receiver who dropped the ball in the end zone against the Patriots? It was Jacoby Myers? No, not Jacoby Myers. Shoot, I cannot remember this dude's name. Um, Lee, Lee Evans. Okay, he dropped the ball like. Flacco drops it in his bread basket. He's in the end zone. This would win the game. Yeah. Drops the ball. And then Cundiff misses the field goal. That, <laughs> it was that game. <laughs> this is prior to St. Justin Tucker of uh Yes. Yeah. We we tried to we tried Billy Cund Bill, Billy Cundiff's last name is now an is now a what is it, an adjective? Is that the right or verb? Or verb? Cundiff. You cundiffed it. What yeah. is that? Is that that's that a, verb, a verb, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like a dude's last name is a verb. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon my non-English knowing. Well, how about this past uh, year when that Cowboys kicker kept missing? 
<laughs> he missed extra points after after chip shot field goal. It's like, oh man, this guy right. <laughs> missed again. <laughs> but then everyone's kind of like laughing because it's the Cowboys. Yeah. But then he finally made it. Everyone's like, thank God this guy made it. <laughs> right. And I think they cut him after he made it one or two. Yeah. And I don't think they. I think they got someone else. But yeah, yeah like you get cut. Like you don't even get to ride the. The, the charter flight home. No. Like, find your own flight home. <laughs> right. You get to fly coach <laughs> on United. Yeah. And where people are just fighting each other. Yeah, frontier. Yeah. <laughs> Plastic <laughs> seats. <laughs> Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even get a full t- tray table. Yeah. By the way, have you ever been on Spirit? The tray table is the size of my hand. I've never, and I will never. Yeah, no. I, I did it once. Never do it again. Like, those airlines make Southwest look like legacy carriers. <laughs> yeah. Like a boarding group, like oh, you're first class, bro. Yeah, like it's like like Emirates first class compared to yeah, Spirit. Like the back of the seats cut out. Is it <laughs> so like all like you know how like the back would have like stuffing? Yeah, and like it would be flat and whatnot. Not on Spirit. Spirit, uh, you see the roundedness. So it's basically like the seat. It's it's like the plastic seat. Yeah, and they literally just like put some kind of fabric over it, but didn't cover the back of it. So if, you basically see the curvature of the seat. Yeah, if they could use stadium seats, they would. Yeah. Like where the like the little freaking thing fu- not in movie theater. Right. <laughs> Those are padded. Stadium. Hard plastic. They yeah. swap, you get up and they stick back up. And they tr- they if there's a little kid, you have to like put extra weight on them so it stays down. So it doesn't fall in the crack. And they try and sell it to you. Oh, they're extra comfortable because they conformed to your bottom. <laughs> no. It's hard as shit. <laughs> Stop trying to convince me of this bullshit. But while we're talking about football, well, we can kind of bring this to a close in a minute. Um, some of the futures bets I placed, um, of course, they're making me log back in. So I took the I took the Ravens over ten and a half wins. So if they get to eleven wins, this is the same bet I did last year. Mm-hmm. Um, the, it was minus 102. So a $25 bet, you're essentially getting your money, uh, double your money minus like a dollar. Uh, the Las Vegas Raiders. Now, I bet money on the Raiders last year. Big mistake. But the over under was six and a half wins for the Raiders. Who's their uh, quarterback this year? Jimmy G. Jim, Porn star Jimmy. Oh, really? Yeah. Now, I don't think Jimmy is that bad of a quarterback. His health has always been the issue. He's back with McDaniels where they were with together in New England. I think the over-under is only six and a half. I think they can make seven. So I did $25 on that, mm-hmm. and that returns, um, returns your money plus another buck. So basically $51 return on that. Um. I also did some Orioles bets, by the way. Okay. So, to win the AL East, it was going off at plus 26, 260. So, I put $10 to return 36. I was like, that's not a bad bet. Yeah. Um, and I put it on them before they took over first. So, okay. I got a little bit better deal on that. Yeah. Um, and then I was like, well, let's see what else there is. And then there was the Orioles to win the American League. So basically, win the ALCS. Mm-hmm. It was a plus seventy seven fifty, so ten dollars to win eighty five. So I'm not betting a ton, but some of these returns are pretty good if they right. win. Um, and then I was like, well, if I'm betting to win the American League, what if they what if they win the World Series just on chance? Plus eighteen hundred. Okay. So a ten dollar bet returns one ninety. All right. Worst case, you lose a ten dollar bet, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think the Orioles. I mean, they, they've got the best record in the American League now. Yeah. The Yankees kind of slid back. You know, it's, it's funny because when, when they took over, when they were in sole possession of the lead in the AL East, I was like, that's the best. You know what's second best? Is that the Yankees are in last. And you know what's third best? The Red Sox are in second to last. <laughs> so. you know, the only caveat to that is they both have winning records, though. Yeah. Well, if you – so – the AL East is strong. Now, if you look at the AL Central with Minnesota and Detroit, I mean, I think Minnesota wouldn't even would be in last place with their current record 
over any in any other uh, yeah. division. Yep. So well, they, they they went to the balanced schedule this year, so the AL East doesn't play more games against other AL East teams now. Mm-hmm. They all play all the teams equally. Yeah. So I think you're going to see, and I kind of made a bad bet earlier in the year. I took uh, the Red Sox over under with 77 wins, Mm -hmm. and they've got 51 right now, I think. I took the under on that because I thought the Red Sox were going to have a rough year. Yeah. Now, their second half could be rough, and I I might get that bet. Um, But I took the Orioles over. 70, 75 wins. Mm-hmm. So I'm definitely going to get that one. Yeah. The only problem is it might get offset by the uh, by the Red Sox bet if yeah. the Red Sox get over 77 wins. But see, if the Red Sox are really stinking up the joint, they might just blow it up. Yeah. So, and you all, not that anyone would get hurt, but you still have like some catastrophic pitching injuries, yeah. stuff like that that can, you know, so, and if they're stinking towards end of August, you know they're going to start blowing that thing up. Yeah, they're going to go for draft picks. Yeah. Because um, the Red Sox used, um, they used the Billy Bean model, the old uh, Moneyball model. Mm-hmm. They still use that even though they have more money. Um, so they do they do value draft picks. So, yeah, you're right. They could jettison some, some talent. Um, I still think they're going to get over 77 wins, though. So I think I'm going to lose that one. But I'll win the Orioles one, mm-hmm. so I'll, I'll basically wash that because out. Because the Orioles are, at, I think, what sixty one right now. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, there, there's no way they're not going to yeah, hit. That it. team looks good. They do. Dude, I I was watching them against Tampa Bay, and uh, there was a great double play, line drive to Gunnar Henderson at third. Gunnar catches it for the first out, and then from his knees throws it to first because the runner on first wasn't able to get back in time, and they got him too. It was, I mean, it was sweet. Yeah. So I mean, they're just d- defensively they're firing at all cylinders. They're getting hits from all over the lineup. Um, well, so. you, you got to think. I mean, and they got to these wins with Cedric Mullen out for like a month. Yeah. So and now I mean now that they got him back, they're they're in a tough spot though, and I only they're in a good tough spot though. They've called up some prospects mm-hmm. like Jordan Westberg, um, and. Gunnar Henderson was called up as well, but they still have one of the top farm systems in the league. Yeah, with those guys that got promoted. So maybe basically saying take those guys out of the system. The guys that are still left in the system, mm-hmm. they still have a top three farm system. Yeah, and apparently Jackson Holiday is the number one rated prospect. Now yeah, he's, he's he just got promoted to double A. Yeah, so I need, we need to get out to Bowie to see a game. Yeah, but definitely, and, and and we're going I think in a couple weeks. Yeah, um, but yeah it. Their their dilemma is going to be. They're obviously in it. Do you trade some prospects for pitching, starting pitching right now? Mm-hmm. Now Jackson Holiday is not going to be on the block. They're not trading him, right? But they have a lot of prospect capital to use, and they've been talking. There is the talk of Shohei Otani coming to Baltimore. The problem is he's not going to re-sign here. Didn't he just sign in Atlanta? Otani? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I hope not. That could be some uh, some misinformation I heard. Fake news? Yeah. Let's see. Otani trade. No. He's still with the Angels. Okay. Yeah, he hasn't been traded yet. Um, well, wait, 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 wait. Braves? Did you say the Braves? Yeah. Um, oh, oh never mind. They're just taking part in. Yeah. Okay. I just think he's a prime candidate for Baltimore. Because mm-hmm. the, the Angels want a lot for him, which I think is strange. He's in a contract here. Yeah. And everyone knows he's not going to resign with the Angels. No. That team's going nowhere. The problem, the problem though, is most Asian players like to stay on the West Coast. Um, and the MLB likes them on the West Coast because the Asian countries can watch games at a reasonable hour. Yep. Um, so having him in Baltimore, I mean, that being said, I mean, who is that? Um, they just picked up a pitcher from uh, Seattle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's a good pitcher. He had some rough go, but apparently his bad stat line was from the 
early on in the season, mm-hmm. and his last two months have been really good. But who who was the guy that signed with the Yankees? That was a huge Japanese pitcher. Was it Hideki Matsui? Yeah. Um, he was a huge signing at the time. Yeah. And he signed with an East Coast team, but they paid a lot of money for him. Yeah. I just don't think Otani signs on an East Coast team unless someone just drops a boatload of cash in his pocket. Yeah, I don't know if Peter Angelos is doing that. No, and and, and you got to think. I mean, you're not just getting a pitcher. You're getting a, you're getting essentially the best pitcher in the game and the best hitter. Yeah. I mean, if I was that guy, I, I'm going to go to the highest bidder. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's he's... And people were trying to like, people were trying to say that they were talking about generational talent. And it was um, it, it was on Twitter, and they were talking about they're talking to Rob Long from the Big Bad Morning Show, and they were essentially trying to say that Gunnar Henderson and Adley Rutschman are generational talents. And I kind of inter- I interjected and I said, as long as Shohei Otani is part of this generation of player. None of them are generational talents. Yeah. Because they're not pitching. They're not the best pitcher and the best hitter in the game. He's the only one. He is one of one. What I So I saw him play at Camden Yards on back in May. And the dude started. He pitched. I think he went six innings. And then almost hit the cycle. Like, I mean, could you start the game? Starting pitcher hits the cycle. I mean, the first time in history that, that ever happened. And um, and the thing is, the only reason he didn't hit the cycle, he hit a ball that could have been a double. If there was no runner on first, he would have gotten the double. Mm. That's the one he missed. So, um, yeah, it, it was crazy. Like, for baseball fans, that guy is the biggest anomaly we are ever going to see. Mm-hmm. Like, forget Barry Bonds and the home run record. Forget the Mark, Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa thing. I mean, outside of like, shoot, I, I don't, I don't, I just don't think you can compare him to anybody. I mean, outside of Babe Ruth, which yeah. none of us saw, right, right, and, and in this modern day where they protect players like with with bubble wrap to let, and especially his first year here, he blew out his arm, mm-hmm. and he comes back and he's still allowed to pitch and hit. And the fact that he stayed injury free since, yeah, we're never going to see anything like this. And the dude is being wasted in Anaheim. It, I am, I, I, I am shocked at the amount of money the Angels have spent on players, the contracts they've given out. Think about it; they got Albert Pujols out of St. Louis. Mm-hmm. They paid Mike Trout. Yeah, they they got Shohei Otani. And and look at me, and even the Padres. Look at what the look at the people they've paid. Yeah. The amount of money San Diego's paid to the, to the Padre players is crazy. They're in dead last. Yeah. The Angels, dead last. <laughs> like, that's a lot of money to lose all that all those games. Yep. So imagine if Otani can go to an East Coast team. The amount of eyeballs that will be on him is far and above what we're going to be on him with L.A. Oh, yeah. The only LA team that could possibly even match the eyeballs of an East Coast team is the Dodgers. Yeah. Because they're and, and the reason being is because there's still a lot of East Coast Dodger fans from the time they were the Brooklyn Dodgers. Mm-hmm. A lot of the older fans. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I'd like to see him in Baltimore. I don't think he'll resign, but um But maybe, hey, maybe maybe Otani will feature himself in a music video. Like Jason Aldean's and they'll, can- and they'll <laughs> cancel canceled. beforehand. Yeah. Um, I feel it. Or he won't sing the national anthem loud enough. Right. I mean, he's Japanese, but he should be singing our national anthem. Right. Yeah. So. We appreciate you listening. If you have any comments or want to rate us like Benny did with a zero star review, uh, we'd love to hear about it. We hope you listen. We want to thank Cheers and Spirits in the Arnold Station Plaza. Pick up some wine, beer, or liquor. And if you have trouble deciding what you want, go ahead and ask. They will be more than happy to help you out. And they've never let me down as far as selection goes. So, we hope you enjoyed the show. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>